Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a look at kubectl. Probably the most important thing when we're learning Kubernetes because we use it so much. So kubectl is a command line interface tool that lets you control Kubernetes clusters. So the idea is kubectl uh, is a program where you run, uh, you write in commands into your uh, uh, bash, uh, bash terminal, and it will send HTTP requests to the API server onto the uh, Kubernetes components or objects, if you prefer to call them that. And kubectl looks for a file named config in the home directory. So notice it says dollar sign home. So that's usually the same thing as writing a tilde in Linux. If you write a t like cd tilde, it usually goes to home, okay? Um, and that will be in the dot cube directory. And then even though it doesn't show here, it'd be like forward slash config. And we cover config in very uh, granular detail in this course, uh, but that's during follow alongs. I don't know if I actually make a slide on it. So kubectl has the following syntax. Uh, the idea is we have kubectl, then we have command, type, name, and flags. So let's cover all of these uh, parts, okay? So the first is command. So command is the operation you want to perform. And so here you can see example where we're doing copy. So the available commands we have is annotation. So key value data that can be applied to resources. Apply, so executes manifest files to create and modify Kubernetes resources. This one we use a lot. <laughs> we have auth, so inspect uh, if you are authorized to perform an action. And we do show you this one in the course when we're doing role-based access controls to say, am I allowed to perform these actions under a particular user when we're setting up their permissions? Autoscale, so it creates an autoscaler that automatically chooses the set number of pods that run in a cluster. We definitely cover that in this course. CP, copy files, directories to and from containers. Actually, we didn't do that in this course in the, in the labs, but it's not too hard to figure out how to do that. Create, so create specific uh, Kubernetes cluster level resources. Most times we're using apply because it creates and modify. But in some cases, you just never modify particular objects. So I guess in some cases we use create, but a lot of times you can you just use the word apply instead. Delete, so delete resource files, uh, file names, ST, uh, STDNs, resources and names by resources and label selects. We use delete all the time. Describe, show details of specific resources. We use that one a lot as well. Diff, um, the online configuration with local configs. I don't think, I've never ran that once, but uh, yeah. So there you go for the commands. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> we got edit. So edit resource from the default editor. Uh, execute, so execute command with a container. We definitely use that one a lot. Expose, expose a resource as a Kubernetes service. That one we use a lot too. Get, so generally used to get the status of an existing Kubernetes resource. Similar to describe, but not as detailed. Customize, so print a set of API resources generated from instructions to customization YAML. We don't do that in this course, but we uh, we do cut, uh, cover what customize is. Label, so update labels on a resource. Logs, so print the logs of a container in a pod or a specific resource. Patch, so update fields of a resource using strategic merge patch, a JSON merge patch or JSON patch. Um, and I mean, you can do this. I just never patch. I would just update a file and then do and apply. Port forward, we definitely use that quite a few times in this course. So forward one or more local ports to a pod. Proxy creates a proxy server between local hosts and the Kubernetes API server. Uh, I'm just gonna wipe a bit of this away here. Run, so create and run uh, a container image in a pod. Scale, so set a new size of a deployment replica set, replication controller staple set. We cover scale when we do auto scale. Then we have our type. So type is the resource type you want to command. So this could be deployments. Uh, resource types can have abbreviations. So you might type in deployments or you might just type in deploy. Same thing with persistent volumes might be PV, pods might be PO. Uh, and I think it will also take pod as well. So a lot of times I'll just forget to write it with the S on pod and it still seems to work. So here is the same example. This and this is identical. And I'm pointing this out because when I was doing the exam for the KCNA, I would see code, and you do see kubectl commands where you have to pick the right one. And I got mixed up because I thought maybe like deploy wasn't an actual command because I just kept seeing deployment when I watched tutorials and I learned stuff. 
So just realize that if you see a word and you know that there's an object like a persistent volume, you see PV, uh, you know, you can pretty much guess that it is, it, it exists. And I don't think in the exam they would just make up a term, like try to trick you up by taking a name and like dropping the S and having to guess, okay? There are over 50 plus resource types. So here you can see them all. Uh, they don't all have abbre uh, abbreviations, uh, but you pretty much learn the ones that you need to learn. So like ING is a common one, SC, storage class, PV, PVC. I never write pod, I just write the full thing there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of them, but you just learn the ones you need to learn, okay? Then you have the name. So the name specifies the name of the resource. So here we have pod and notice we can actually provide not just one, but two. So sometimes they take multiples. These are case sensitive. So just be aware of that. Um, if the name is omitted, details for all the resources are displayed. And very common, um, it's very common. Like if I only have uh, a single resource. So if I create a single pod, I know a single pod, a lot of times I'll just write kubectl get pods or describe pods because for describe because I know it's only going to show the one. And I do that a lot in this uh, course. But often um, when you have a lot more, you'll be specifying the name. Uh, flags uh, specify optional flags. Um, a flag is a concept for com like command line interfaces. You see them all the time. It's this double hyphen followed by something here. Now, you don't have to provide an equals between um, the flag and its value, um, but sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. When I do and don't, it's just random, but you'll see me do that throughout the course. Some command line interfaces are sensitive. kubectl is not. You can either have the equals or not. Flags generally start with two hyphens, um, and I know you can't see, but there are two hyphens here. It's just the font uh, group them together. Uh, sometimes flags have abbreviations with a single hyphen. So double, double, or sorry, a hyphen, hyphen server is the same as hyphen S. And so, you know, some people just don't want to type as much, so they use the abbreviated ones. Available flags will vary based on commands. Uh, sometimes flags can be assigned values uh, or do not expect a value at all. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, there you go. Oh, just one more thing for kubectl. There is really good documentation. It isn't uh, straightforward how to find it. So I just had to point it out that you go to uh, Kubernetes.io forward slash docs, forward slash reference, forward slash generated, forward slash kubectl, kubectl commands. Uh, if you Google kubectl, uh, Kubernetes, uh, it's usually the second link. And so what I do when I'm looking at Google is I just like carefully look for this one underneath because if you get here, it has so many examples. It's really, really useful, okay?